Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today, what we're talking about is orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic hypotension is adrenal fatigue in most cases. Orthostatic means when you get up from a particular position or you change your altitude of your head. So that means if you're laying down and you suddenly stand up or you, you're bent over tying your shoes and you suddenly stand up and you get dizzy, you get hypotension, low blood pressure. That's normally modulated in the human by the adrenal glands. And what happens is your vessels in your throat, the blood vessels in your neck, pick up the blood pressure with receptors and they send the message to your brain. And then your brain decides that, oh boy, the pressure's dropped because I stood up suddenly. And then it sends a message to the adrenal glands that says, you know, this guy's probably not gonna have enough blood volume to stay up. So let's give him a little extra blood pressure, a little extra blood volume for just a second to make sure he can compensate for standing up. And that normally happens to all of us if we're healthy. So we bend over, we stand up, and we're fine. But if we bend over, we stand up, and we say, whoa, we've experienced probably orthostatic hypotension. Now, in some cases, you can have orthostatic hypertension, which is overpressure. Now, you might wonder, what do they mean by this? What do they mean by orthostatic hypo or hypertension? And that means, generally, about 10 points above or below the normal number. Well, the normal number is reported in blood pressure when you do a blood pressure cuff as systolic over diastolic. That's the maximum pressure over the lowest pressure in the heart. And so we're talking about, if you compare the first number, systolic and diastolic, 120 over 80, for example, is normal, hypotension might be one of those numbers goes 10 points or more below the previous number. So if you go from laying down at 120 over 80, which is a normal blood pressure, and you stand up and your blood pressure suddenly is 100 over 80, you've taken your top number and gone down by 20 points. That's a lot. And that's enough to make a person feel woozy. On the other hand, the upper number might be fine and the lower number might drop. You might, st you might stand up suddenly from laying down at 120 over 80 and you stand up and it's 120 over 70. Now you've got a 10 point drop in the diastolic, the bottom number, the, the, the lowest the pressure that occurs in the heart and the blood vessels. So either of those qualify and, and some textbooks will say it's 10 points above or below the first number, or it's 20 points above or below, or in certain situations it's 10 or 20, or it's diastolic or systolic, or it's sitting or it's standing. And, you know, a rule of thumb generally is just use 10. 10 high or 10 below, either upper or lower number from the previous value. So you're laying down, you got two numbers, 120 over 80 to start with. Your next number is 10 points low. Either the, either the top number or the bottom number is 10 points below the first number, that's usually gonna be a good rule of thumb for figuring out if your adrenals are insufficient. Now, obviously you have to talk to your doctor about this, I can't diagnose you, but what I'd like to do is talk about a little bit about what this means. Because normally, once your blood vessels in your throat pick up this pressure and send it to the brain, and the brain says, ah, oh, that's not enough, and sends a message to the adrenal glands back here, and says uh, above your kidneys, you need to secrete just a little more epinephrine or cortisol, which both can be secreted, but in any case, these hormones will, will be secreted and the person, and, and they'll, they'll go right to the heart and the heart will pump a little extra deeply, a little extra more deeply with more volume and more pressure, just temporarily, just to compensate for you standing up. And then you're back to normal again, and everything's fine. And all the blood vessels throughout the body compensate and everything's okay. But if a person's been stressed out from work or family or food or supplements or chemicals or toxins or EMFs or blue light, they may have chronic adrenal stress and they can't cope with gravity. And so they get orthostatic hypotension. Now, many of you have seen something like this, which is a very good Omron blood pressure cuff that's automatic. Now, Omron's got a great reputation. They're probably the, the, one of the best out there, but there's no automatic blood pressure cuff that can do this job. This job is a job that requires an old school manual stethoscope and sphygmomanometer, which is the blood pressure cuff with the bulb and the dial. And that's the reason for that is because you can't pump up or let out the pressure in these automatic ones that are electrical or battery powered with a pump inside them fast enough. They will not release fast enough. So you won't be able to, to um, 
adequately fill them and release them in such a way as to get the reading. And the reason for that is this is a special kind of blood pressure test. This is not a tilt test. They're not on a tilt table. This is not a test for POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. That's a different problem. This is similar and it's related, but it's not the same problem. This is an instantaneous problem that happens within the first 10 to 30 seconds of, of changing your altitude of your head from your body. So a normal blood pressure is taken lying down. You're laying down and you take your blood pressure. The doctor takes it with whatever machine they take it with and they do it two or three times and they try to see if it's accurate and if it's stable and it should be stable. And then they write that down and that's usually 120 over 80 or, or thereabouts. In many cases, we do shortcuts and we take people's blood pressure sitting because a healthy person at rest should have a pretty similar blood pressure sitting. You can also take the blood pressure standing and just like with sitting and lying down, you want the arm at the level of the heart. So with laying down, it's easy, but with sitting or with standing, the, arm has, the left arm has to be held out by the operator, by the examiner, and not by the patient. So the patient can't be holding their arm up, arm up for, the, for the doctor or the nurse or the, or the technician. They have to relax and let the technician hold it up for them or rest it on some kind of stand like in a chair. And in that way, the arm and the cuff are at the same height as the heart and everything is fine. You don't want the arm up like this and you don't want it you know, back behind you or down low or something like this. You want it up right at the level of the heart. But we don't want the effort of the person holding that arm up. So you might wonder, well, gosh, why is my blood pressure a little lower when I'm sitting than when I'm lying down? Well, that can often be a problem where a person is mildly maladapted to gravity because of a chronic long-term adrenal insufficiency. If you don't have good adrenal output and your adrenals are not putting out the right amount of hormones, then gravity itself can be a chronic stressor to you and you might find that your blood pressure is a little bit lower, a little bit high when you're sitting because your adrenal system compensates for that gravity and it can overcompensate by providing higher blood pressure than normal or it can undercompensate by providing lower blood pressure. It's fairly common to have people do either of these. And so they might be having an adrenal compensation for gravity because they're chronically stressed and their adrenals are fatigued and exhausted nutritionally and electrically and, and neurologically and because of sleep. And they either overcompensate with, with extra blood pressure or lower blood pressure than when they're lying down and don't have to really um, compensate for gravity because they're flat. So what do we do? We take the patient and we lie them down and we take their blood pressure at least three times laying down and we look for consistent blood pressure. Sometimes it takes a person three, five, ten minutes to, to equilibrate and get a normal blood pressure that's consistent. Some patients don't have consistent blood pressures and they don't have consistent pulses and they don't have consistent pulse oxygenations. And that's because uh, in many cases, they have dysautonomia or they have some kind of unstable autonomic system. And that's ultimately from the brain. This autonomia comes from the brain or the spinal cord or the brain stem, and it's a lack of control. And it can come from chronic illness, chronic infection, autoimmune disease, toxic chemicals, poisons, heavy metals. There's many, many, many causes for this. It can come from EMFs, electromagnetic fields, chronic exposure to blue light. All of these things can drive that problem. So we lay the person down, we take three readings, and we write them down, 120 over 80, 120 over 80, 123 over 82, and we're going to get fairly consistent numbers. And then we have to stand them up and get their blood pressure. How's that going to work? Well, we're going to have to put a manual blood pressure cuff on them, and that means we're going to have to put that around their arm, their left arm. We're going to have to make sure it fits them because we want to make sure it's a good fit. Now, many Americans are getting larger and larger, and so we need a taller cuff because we have to deal with the bigger circumference of the arm. If there's subcutaneous fat or a lot of muscle, we have to get around that big arm. So it's very important to get the right size cuff. If it's a child, we need a smaller cuff. We have to have the cuff be tall enough to get around the person's arm, but we still also need about two inches at the bottom from the cuff to the elbow. So we want to make sure there's a gap there and we don't just have cuff to, cuff to shoulder. That's too much. That's too tall. And then we also don't want the cuff to look like a little bandage because it's, it's not tall enough. And you'll, you'll see that's a problem. So in any case, once you've got a manual blood pressure cuff, a sphygmomanometer, these are about $18, and the stethoscope is, again, probably 16 bucks, whereas the manual blood pressure cuffs are about $50. 
But once you have all the stuff and, you, and you're ready to go in, in your home or, or in your office or, or at the gym, um, you know, you can, you can do these things very, very simply for yourself. And then there's some technique involved. So that means that the operator, the examiner, has to, you can't do this to yourself at all. They have to put the, the, the earpieces in for the stethoscope and they go forward like this because the ear canals go forward like this and they have to have that ready with their hand. They have to have the cuff around the patient or the friend. They have to have this clipped to their shirt somehow so they can see it, right? They have to have it somehow clipped so they can see it. And then they have to be holding the bulb that lets the pressure in and out so that they can close it and open it appropriately and let the air out. And so that means that we're going to have to have this person set up so that if the blood pressure cuff is on their left side, they're laying down, their left arm is toward the edge of the table and the examiner has to be on that left side of the person, up toward their head, somewhere standing above their waist. So that as they stand with that person, they can pump up the blood pressure while they're laying there, pump up the cuff, get it up to the number they want it to be. And there's other classes I'll teach on how to actually take the blood pressure, but they're gonna get it a few, several points above, above what they suspect it to be. So we're talking about, you know, 20 to 30 points above what, what they expect it to be. So if they expect it to be, you know, 120, they're gonna be 20 points above, above 120. And then they're going to have that person stand suddenly with them. Not crazy crash around and not hold their breath, but I want you to stand up quickly with me and I'll pivot with you. So the, the examiner will stand with them, help them stand up, and not everybody can stand up rapidly, but we have to stand up as fast as we can. We stand up, we hold their arm, their left arm out in front of us, and we let out the pressure that we've already pumped up while listening with the stethoscope. And then we can take the blood pressure properly and catch, as the, as the pressure goes down, we can catch the systolic and then the diastolic pressure and then we can write it down. And then we can see if it's 10 points above or below the previous systolic or diastolic that we wrote down from lying down. So it's three lying down and one sudden standing, but you gotta get that technique right. And then I also like to see what seated looks like, just plain old seated without any, any commotion. Just what does the seated left side blood pressure look like? This will be a good way of showing how to do this and we'll produce videos for you in the future about exactly how to do it but it's important to learn that orthostatic hypotension has to be checked this way and it has to be done fairly quickly. If someone can't get up rapidly, we often use a chiropractic table and, and they're fairly fast and we just tilt them up very quickly. So we lay them down, take their blood pressure, pump up the blood pressure, tilt the table, and then do the blood, do the blood pressure test. But again, that's not the POTS test. The POTS test is different. That's where they do a tilt table and they tilt you up and down and then they measure your pulse for an elevation of, of tachycardia, fast heartbeat, minutes after the event. I'm talking about seconds after the event, not measuring pulse, but measuring blood pressure and looking at 10 points above or below the lying down number. So I hope this has been fun for you. I hope this has been helpful. And I hope you understand now why you can't use even a very reliable and nice and convenient automatic blood pressure cuff with a motor in it you have to use a manual one because of this process. Thanks.